Hello and welcome back. All right. So we heard a little bit from John about how Northern Virginia supports businesses. And now we're going to talk about how to launch your own business with our entrepreneurship panel. So here with us today, we have Tommy Luganville from Techport Business Incubator and Sammy Popat from University of Maryland. So welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Yeah, so uh, I'll go ahead and introduce yourself, Tommy, uh, if you can please go ahead, just tell us a little bit about who you are and what is it that you do with Techport Business Incubator? Sure, sure. So I am Tommy Luganville. I'm actually from Rockville, Maryland, uh, about a tenth of a mile away from Game Gym. Uh, we um, couldn't tell from your from your flag. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, well it doesn't tell you how it doesn't tell you how close I am to the True. game gym. But True. <laughs> I hon I honestly thought about just coming to the game gym to do this, but whatever. <laughs> so so anyway, I run uh, Techport for University of Maryland. Um, it's a drone incubator, but it's become a lot more than that. Um, we deal with high technology, and very recently with some of the things that Josh is doing and some of the friends in the esports community. Um, have gotten into um, a lot of media production and learning more about uh, games and the different businesses that surround them. So hopefully I get a chance to talk about that. Excellent. And Sammy? Yeah, thanks, Maya. And so I, too, work with Tommy, actually, but not at the tech board at the University of Maryland, um, based in College Park, so a little bit further uh, from Rockville. Um, but what I'll say is um, I, I kind of wear many hats and kind of like an entrepreneurship, that's what ends up happening. So um, the reason I put in the title ecosystem builder is that's kind of like the overarching um, principle of what I do. So at the university, I'm the campus connector, really helping to foster collaboration across campus, spe specifically around innovation and entrepreneurship. And the goal is really to help kind of activate all our faculty or students or staff kind of who are interested in that concept but not necessarily sure how they want to engage and what resources are available. And then I also manage our research park. So across the street from campus, we have the Discovery District. Lots of cool companies, no gaming companies yet, but hopefully we'll get there. Um, but we're doing a lot of stuff with drones, um, quantum computing, things like that. And so I kind of manage the community, make sure that the people who are there get in touch with each other. We can recruit our students. We can have our faculty doing research projects, some really cool stuff happening. And then the last thing, one of the things that you've got um, listed for me is Maverick, which is um, basically a really cool acronym, Mixed Augmented Virtual Reality Innovation Center. I got to give credit to my boss, Julie Lenzer. She came up with that name. Um, I'll tell the backstory when we get into the conversation, but that's kind of what I do on a day to day. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Now, before we launch into entrepreneurship questions, I promised Tommy we can talk about Fortnite. So yeah. can you can you tell us because we just learned uh, as we we're getting ready for for this call that Fortnite actually started in Maryland, which was news to a lot of a lot of us here. <laughs> so I'm stealing Sammy's thunder because he's the one that brought it up back. Oh, OK. But but okay. it's okay. So, so okay. Sam, then so Sammy, go ahead. I, I got it wrong. Yeah, then. Sammy, I'm sorry. Yeah, Sammy, it's okay. <laughs> no, I was um, admiring the car that was graded on uh, Tommy's desk. And I was like, huh, is that Fortnite? He goes, yeah. And I go, you know, that's a Turk company. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, well, Tim Sweeney is a University of Maryland alum. Um, and he actually was in a computer science program living in Potomac and kind of like that garage, uh, you know, it's a venture company. That was his idea was Epic Games. Um, yep. He ended up taking it down to North Carolina and building it. And of course, Fortnite came out of it. So we're very fond and, you know, speak highly of Tim and we're happy that uh, his company's doing really well. And, you know, obviously there's uh, things going on in the news, but, uh, you know, we're rooting for all the good guys and, uh, you know, we're just um, happy that uh, Tim's doing really well. And, and I'll, I'll piggyback on that, that, that the idea um, that I talk a lot about with people is that Bethesda games, you know, that's, that's named after Bethesda, Maryland. Um, you know, that's a, that's a Maryland, it started here in Maryland. It's a huge international company. I know the identity is less about, you know, only being in Maryland or only being American. Uh, it's a global company, but there are, there are a lot of um, gaming and computer science uh, professionals around this area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just I just wanted to mention that really quick because Fortnite is a much loved game among our students and, you know, Bethesda is a much loved studio across the world, like you said. So it's really exciting to know that it started right here. And hopefully that encourages others who are living right here to go ahead and, and start something exciting. So with that, um, Tommy, can you tell us a little bit about what is an incubator and, uh, you know, who's there? How does it work? Sure. So, you know, by definition, incubator um, can mean a lot of different things. Uh, so Sammy talked about how he runs a, kind of a, a community hub, an innovation hub. Um, 
I, I tend to think that the most successful incubators run exactly the way Sammy described. Um, but to get more specific with it, an incubator is a place where a small business or a solo entrepreneur can go to have resources um, like high-speed internet, printing, faxing, um, a conference room, and also an office. And they can do it in a way that is affordable, but also in a way that they can be around other people that are similar to them. Uh, they might not be running the exact same type of business or starting the same type of business, but they may find commonalities among the, each other in terms of personality traits. So, you know, I guess the best way for me to describe it is um, Techport is a drone incubator, but somehow we've been able to attract people from all different walks of life, um, healthcare, um, defense contracting, and yes, gaming, um, which is why I think I'm here today, um, because my, um, you know, job is really going out and finding people who are trying to start and create new things. And I know the game gym is up and running and it's doing really well, but it's still kind of a young company. And because it was young, I was able to get access to Josh and talk to Josh and learn about the things that you guys were doing to support young people and trying to pursue their passions. It's the same thing as, as running an incubator. Um, it doesn't matter what age you are. Someone's interested in an idea. They think it has value and they want to help people and they want to grow. So here I am um, a, a couple of years later with Fortnite cards and knowing way more about esports than I ever thought I would. Um, but, but that's in a gist what an incubator does. That sounds amazing. And so as far as specifically the Techport business incubator at University of Maryland, who, who's allowed to participate? And if they're interested, how, how do they reach out and, and become a part of it? Sure. So, I mean, the, the incubator is, is near a very large naval base down in Southern Maryland. Um, so predominantly you're going to find aviation drone technology. It's literally in an airport. Um, small businesses that are interested can, can reach out to me directly. Um, I'm happy to share my contact details. And the truth is, is that it, it, you can really come from any background. Um, yes, you're going to find more people that are into aviation, but there's also people in there that are doing things that don't have anything to do with aviation. Uh, we have a gentleman who 3D prints fingers. Uh, he had an accident uh, when he was working on a plane. He actually ended up cutting off one of his fingers. And because of that, he went and started a company around the idea of 3D printing fingers for people. So he's in the building. Um, and it's really just more of, like I said, a mentality and it's a type of personality. So anyone who's interested in starting a business or getting involved, they can, they can be more than, uh, I would be more than happy to have them reach out to me directly. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And just to clarify, it's not only open to students or faculty of University of Maryland, it's really open to anyone in the area who's interested. That's correct. That's correct. It's a, it's a partnership between um, the Navy, the community and the school. Excellent. Excellent. Maya, can I add something there for Tommy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Tommy doesn't give himself enough credit, by the way. I think if you just took the definition of what Tommy said, in some ways you could call it a co-working space, but the truth is an incubator is much more deliberate and proactive. And someone like Tommy who runs the incubator is one who actually cares not just about the community um, and not just the community that's there, but the community surrounding the tech port. And so the things that he does, not just around events and programs, but also ensuring that the people in the community get visibility, that he helps market and promote them. He identifies opportunities that may be of use, whether it's grants or funding or research. So I think to Tommy's um, point, you know, an incubator has much more than just a place where people come together, but a place where someone like him actually helps activate them and supports them through their process of growing as a small business. That's true. And, and to Sammy's point, you know, and thank you for the compliment, but it's also there are other people that surround it, right? So you do usually have the director of an incubator that's doing those things that Sammy defined. But then, especially when you um, have an incubator from a university, you've got other people that are there to help you. So if someone were to call me from the College Park area, I would direct them to Sammy. Um, and so there's really just like a team of people that help. Um, but most of the time, entrepreneurially minded, not necessarily someone who started a business, but someone who's kind of a big thinker who can support people in trying to do new things. That's a that's a really good addition, Sammy and Tommy. Thank you for clarifying because it's important to be in a community of like-minded people who who might support you. But uh, having somebody like a director or other folks in the community who are actively looking to connect you with resources—that's sort of that next step that a lot of uh, businesses who are starting out need, or actually 
most most or all businesses who start out really really do need those resources so that's yeah. a great clarification thank you for pointing that out uh sammy you in your introduction mentioned maverick so can you tell us a little bit about what that is yeah so uh back in 2017 uh the university was looking at opportunities to really kind of uh, expand upon some of our centers of excellence and areas that we actually saw some you know, promising or enabling technologies. And one of them was AR, VR, right? So this idea of what we call extended reality XR, um, the university has, has some really great programs within computer science. Um, I'm gonna step back a little bit because there's a backstory that's kind of helpful. Sure. Um, so we talked about Tim Sweeney. We are also proud of another alum. His name is Brendan Arib. Um, he was the CEO of Oculus when he sold it to Facebook. And so lucky for us, he came out with a nice windfall. He came back to visit the University of Maryland, and that is his alma mater, but he's also a local guy from Annapolis. Um, so we have a lot of cool people that are coming out of the, uh, the state of Maryland and also out of the university. And uh, Brendan was walking around campus, checking out his old, old computer science building. He's like, I can't believe I'm actually in my old building. Like, we're still in the same building. It's about 15 years later. <sighs> what would it cost to create a new building? And I think the people who were around him were kind of like, is he really, is he joking? Is this for real? And he, he's like, no, no, no. Like, what would it cost? And they throw out a figure and he's like, yeah, yeah, let's, let's do it. Like, let's make this happen. And they're like, okay. So, I mean, uh, to the extent that someone who's very wealthy, um, but, you know, he came about as an entrepreneur from the university, did really well for himself. He wanted to give back and that was fantastic. But he also thought we could build a new building dedicated to augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, drone technology, robotics. And we're like, Yes, that's exciting. Let's do that. So um, we are now lucky that the building is up. It's called the Arib, um, Arib Center for Innovation and Engineering, and it has AR VR space in it. But because of that, we actually thought we would go for a grant that would help us to build up an AR VR center of excellence. And I don't think that Maverick is exactly a center of excellence, but it's a hub for resources and information around XR. So um, I was telling you my boss came up with the name Maverick, and that was because Back in 2017, I think Top Gun was going to come out with Top Gun 2. And if you remember, one of the characters um, from the movie was Maverick. So it was like, how do we tie those two things together? We're like, hmm, you have enough letters. You put it together, mixed, <laughs> augmented, virtual reality innovation center. Cool. Let's do it. So to that extent, Maverick exists uh, because we're here to help the community and the ecosystem around XR build in the DC region. And we really think there's a lot of potential. We're not the same as what you have in Silicon Valley. We're not the same as you have in, in kind of Cambridge, Boston area, but we see a lot of potential here, not just in gaming, but also around uh, really positive social use cases. So implicit bias training, we can use it for autism research. We can do it around uh, negotiation, workforce development. So it's really cool in terms of what's popping up around the area. And we're excited to help kind of gestate and hopefully nurture that community so we can actually create a really vibrant, robust, diverse, and inclusive economy around XR here in the DMV. That sounds exciting. And also, I don't know if, uh, if you heard the previous um, speaker, but you know, Northern Virginia, or I guess this area in general, is the next Silicon Valley. So you can start saying that. Uh, you were saying we're not California, but we are the yeah. next Silicon Valley. So you heard it here first. Now you can start spreading that news. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I... I... I hear yeah. that a lot, and I've got to say, like, I, I try to step away from being the next Silicon Valley because I think there's a lot of takeaways from what's happened there. Um, one of the things that we're promoting at the university is actually the DC area is going to become the quantum capital of the world, and that's something we're really excited about. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe Silicon Valley was Silicon Valley, but we want to be our own. Like, when people say like Maryland is as good as Michigan or UC, you know, UCLA or Berkeley, I go. Well, you know what? Maryland's going to be the best. Best Maryland's going to be. And I think the DMV is going to be the best DMV it can be for tech and science and entrepreneurship. I like that. And, and, and the other thing is, is I would remind the, the gentleman who, who spoke before, and I know he knows this, but uh, America Online started in Northern Virginia. So for some of the younger people watching this, you don't realize how big of a deal America Online was to the internet community. So Northern Virginia has been a part of gaming, you know, before gaming was, was getting to where it is today um, because they were bringing people, literally bringing people online. So they've they've got a they've got a history of doing stuff like this. That's that's a great room. I actually had no idea that AOL started here too. That's we're we're in the right spot. This, this yeah, is it. Yeah, we're we're not yeah. the next Silicon Valley. We're we're the next iteration. What did you say? Quantum quantum capital of the world. Yeah, I quantum like computing is going big. Um, 
actually in the discovery district, we have a really cool company called IonQ and they're valued uh, to go public at $2 billion. And they wow. have a really long horizon to be successful. And they're hopefully going to spin out a bunch of other companies. Um, we're excited because the CEO, uh, Peter Chapman, is actually going to be our commencement speaker for next week uh, for the University of Maryland. Um, but there's the highest concentration of quantum scientists and engineers in the world here in the DMV. And it has a lot to do with the federal agencies that are here, but also the high concentration of really highly educated uh, engineers and scientists and tech workers. And so this community definitely has a lot going for it. And that will have effect on quantum, but also on gaming and computing. And so lots of big things happening here. And I did want to throw in another name that I thought people might be interested in. So people know Crash Bandicoot. Uh, one of the first two developers of it is Dave Baggett, who's a University of Maryland alumnus as well. So, you know, Crash Bandicoot's also somebody or something that, you know, comes out of this community. Everything came from Maryland. That's what I'm taking away from. I'm, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but, you know, you can think of like um, Alexa, Alexis Ohanian from Reddit. He's also from Northern Virginia. He grew up in Maryland. So, you know, lots of great people are coming out of this community and they're doing really big things. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the intersection of entrepreneurship and esports and gaming. Um, so how, how do the departments or programs that you work with, how do they relate or help um, the esports and gaming community? So I know, Tommy, you talked about how primarily um, your, your incubator focuses on drones. And, and Sammy, you talked a lot about tech and computing and, and things like that. But obviously, there's an inter inter intersection there. And I know, Tommy, you said you're looking for more companies that are focused on, on esports and yeah. gaming. So where is that intersection? How does it work? Uh, is sure. it growing? Tell us a little bit about that. So I think the natural fit or the easy answer is Maryland has uh, one of the best computer science programs that you'll find anywhere. And so you, you have a talent pipeline from whether it's University of Maryland or just this region, right? Um, a lot of Northern Virginia as well. So that talent pipeline can go into the dev side, the user experience side. Um, but one of the things that, you know, I was excited when Josh invited me to talk today, one of the things that I think is being underutilized is the marketing, business, and multimedia uh, talent that could be developed to cater to this industry. There are some games and uh, studios that do top-notch work, and they're, they're broadcasting and you know, even the, the way that they present things is, is a full production and it, and it, it, it looks great. I think there was um, a League of Legends, there's a League of Legends event going on right now. And I think it's like North America versus Asia. And I'm looking at it and it feels exactly like any single, um, you know, physical sports game that you would watch because of all the commentators and the transitions. So I look at that and I'm like, okay, well, why are we only focusing on the programming side we should also be looking at the marketing side and the business side and i think there's a huge amount of opportunity there so when i went back to school i was down at a, a school called florida tech in in melbourne florida and i don't know if people watching this have heard of something called gamer goo gamer goo it's something you put on your hands so i was in class when my professor dr benjamin started talking about this this um hand uh, cream that he invented and he's talking to everybody and he's like what do you guys think it's for and I was like oh that's that's for gaming he's like you're literally the first person to say that and he goes and he goes yes that's exactly why I'm making this this was three years ago you know since then gamer has become a lot more popular and you can get it just about anywhere and people are using it to keep their hands dry when they're gaming uh, it's very similar to in football where you wear gloves to make the ball. You can catch the ball more easily. It's the same concept. So clearly people like Nike and Adidas, you know, they're the ones who said, oh, well, if we make gloves to make the ball easier to catch or we make bats that are easier to swing, we'll make money. So I think that gaming, you know, it's definitely come a long way, but trickling down into like schools and young people thinking of, well, how do I get involved in this? You don't have to only be a, oh, this is a very expensive card. I dropped that. You don't only have to be a computer scientist to get into the industry. You can, you can just, you could be an artist, right? I mean, look at some of these characters that they're making in Fortnite and you could actually go and get an art degree and go into gaming. So yeah, I think that there's, there's some limiting factors as far as what people think gaming is. 
And I think that that's being broken down. And I have a feeling that more majors and more students who go back or even people who just get training, uh, it won't just be on the programming side. It's going to be a lot of different things. And so things like this are great for young people to learn about that. And, um, you know, I think it's good. And I'm, and I'm glad that you guys are doing this. Absolutely. Yeah, you bring up a great point in terms of the different avenues that folks could go into in terms of esports and gaming. And that's a topic that's come up several times over the course of this weekend. So I'm, I'm happy to hear you bring it up as well, because I think we need to keep talking about it. And we need to keep creating opportunities for folks to learn about the different options. So that we're not just looking at esports and we're like, okay, I can be professional athlete. And I guess I can also right. be an analyst desk because I see that now, like you mentioned, right? But there's there's so many pieces to it. So that's absolutely, absolutely right. Yep. Sammy, what about you, uh, either Maverick or any other programs that you work on? What are the intersections of entrepreneurship and esports and gaming that you see? So there's a couple of thoughts and threads that kind of came to my mind. So one, I do want to talk about a new program that's coming out of university called the Immersive Media Design Major. Mm -hmm. And Tommy kind of alluded to how art and tech are now kind of coming together. Like it's not just the graphic design aspect of it. There's so much more about the narrative and the storytelling. And I think that's a big part of what we're seeing in terms of students who are going into entrepreneurship and also into the innovation side of um, esports and gaming is, is seeing how they intersect, right? You have to have a really good story and then you need the technology to help kind of scale it and bring it to life. And, and so our students are gonna be able to work together and collaborate and really come together on you know, what's the tech side, what's the art side, how do we tell this story in a way that's actually going to get people engaged and be really immersed in it. And so there's some cool things happening there. Um, one of the um, entrepreneurs that I've been working with, his name's Mohil Gupta, he has a company called Aki Clips. And so this kind of ties into esports and gaming and uh, entrepreneurship. So, you know, he actually wears glasses. And for those of us who wear glasses, um, you know, you know, after a while, your ears, especially back here, kind of get a little chafed. And so it's like, you know what, there must be a solution and he really couldn't find one. So we actually came up with something called spacers, which are just another, another way to cushion the back side of your, um, I guess your glasses, the rims of it. And so it's, it's something that's actually, I think it's starting to take off in the community, but it's really cool because this was an idea that he had and he really wasn't sure how it fit in. He just knew that he was dealing with something. But he's like, this is an extension of an issue that I'm having that people who are in the gaming community are also having an effect of. And so maybe it's hurting their productivity. Maybe they have to take a minute and stop and clean their glasses. Well, you know, now this actually fits on nicely and you can wear it. So I think what we're talking about with entrepreneurship is the more that this community grows, the more, in a sense, we're going to identify problems that we didn't necessarily have before. Kind of like the game goo, you didn't really think about the fact that like, oh my gosh, my hands are getting, you know, a little too sweaty and, you know, clammy. And you're like, well, what I do? Oh, game goo, there we go, right? So I, I think the thing about any, uh, anything that you're interested in or passionate about, when you start to realize that there's a pain point that you're not happy about, there might be many, many more people experiencing the same pain point, right? And so I think that's one of the things that I see that really is going to come about is we're going to start identifying new issues. I mean, there's going to be things on the psychological issue. There are going to be things on the physical aspect of it. Um, and, you know, it, anything that you do too much of, I think you know, in moderation, you end up probably having, you know, some certain effect that may be negative. And so we want to also find a way to pull that back, but also find ways to make it so that we can enjoy what we do at a level that's better. And so that's where we're going to have a lot of pain points that people are going to start solving for. And I think one of the things about entrepreneurship that it's, it's really about a mindset. So coming at it from that kind of perspective of, hmm, what could we do to make this better? And who else is experiencing this same problem? And, and in what way are they experiencing it? Maybe it's different from my own, right? Um, and then people come come up with new ideas around it. And, um, you know, really that's going to be the kind of fun part of this is how it evolves. And the evolution is just going to take some time, but the more people we bring to this community, the more people we're going to have wanting to be part of the solution as well. Absolutely. It, it's exciting to hear you mention like Gamer Goo and Oculus because we actually, it, it, it's, it's exciting to see the evolution and the growth of those companies because Gamer Goo actually uh, sent us some samples for, for our last event and we we're fortunate enough to have Oculus um, also as uh, a speaker from, for our last event. So it, it's, it's good to hear about them and that they're, they're doing well and that they're growing. And yeah. uh, I definitely hear you about the pinpointing uh, sort of issues or like points of pain, like you said, right, that other folks might not think about because another speaker that we had uh, again in our in our last event um, developed a clothing company just for gamers. And she was talking about how she noticed how uh, 
hoodies are too, uh, the sleeves are too baggy. Like who, you know, it, it, you have to really play a lot of games and watch a lot of gamers to pinpoint something so small, right? She noticed that they would, people would go like this when they first start playing. So she makes hoodies that have tighter sleeves specifically for gamers. And it's incredible. Right. Interesting. I mean, it's a simple idea, right? But it, mm -hmm. it really does have an impact. And I think part of being in the gaming community is, you know, like, what can I do to make this experience more fun and better and hopefully, you know, more enjoyable? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the other thing to, to mention is that I think, again, there's this, there's this idea that gaming is only, uh, it only takes place in the digital world and that the opportunity is only in the digital world. When the reality is, is that it's, it's now transcending into the physical world. You are selling tickets to arenas. Well, when it's not COVID, you're selling tickets to arenas. So you're putting on an entire entertainment experience because people physically want to go to the arena to watch the game. Your Fortnite cards, they're huge right now, right? People are, people are spending 20, 30, 40, $50,000 on Fortnite cards. Um, you know why? Because they started out playing the game and then they went into the card collecting industry. So what's interesting about that is there's, there's two other ways that you could think of a new business or a pain point. The finance industry, people are using cards now almost as currency and that's insane, right? So you're thinking, okay, well, what are, you know, what, what are ways to get into gaming? Well, there's finance. Then there's also logistics because with all these games, people are interested in buying merchandise and the merchandise is so popular right now that there's literally lag times of four or five, six months to get your favorite character, whether it's the bobblehead or it's the card or it's the shirt. So how do you, how do you improve that? And, and the idea is really goes back to what Sammy said, which is, if you get more people looking and understanding that it's not just about playing the game, that it's an entire lifestyle and community around it, you're going to see entrepreneurs that flow in. And maybe people that are on the call that are listening right now, maybe they're going to be the people that are coming up with these things. Absolutely. So, uh, Sammy, you mentioned that entrepreneurship is a mindset, right? It's about thinking, uh, okay, I see this issue or I see this pain point, how, how can I help solve it? And Tommy just mentioned, you know, it's, it's not about um, just the games, right? You can't have such a narrow view of it. You have to see all the other aspects of it. So uh, keeping those things in mind, what are some of the other sort of misconceptions about entrepreneurship that you see and, and how do you help people really teach about what entrepreneurship is and, and how to get into it? I'm happy to kind of start, Tommy. So sure. um, I, I think a lot of the misconceptions come around, um, you know, entrepreneurs being a certain type of person, um, you know, that they're either a, a young person who's coming out of college with a really cool idea and only knows tech. And the truth is the average age of most entrepreneurs is roughly in their 40s, about 45. Um, and that, that comes out of the fact that they've had some, you know, work experience, possibly about 20, 25 years being in industry, learning the system, kind of making sense of how the hierarchy works, and then starting to recognize, hey, here are some inefficiencies. Here are things that just don't make sense. Here are ways that people haven't kept up with technology that if I became my own business and span out this idea, there actually might be a good enough marketplace that I could make a pretty good living. Um, I think the other misconception is that entrepreneurship is something that you're born with. Um, you know, I, I don't really believe that that's true. I, I do think that entrepreneurship is some more, some people are maybe more inclined to it, but I do think that it is sort of this mindset that we all can have in life. Um, we all have things that we we're irritated by things that just don't make sense. And really, if you start thinking about it from the standpoint of, well, what could I do to make it better or different? You're, you're going to find that there's gonna be a lot of other people who agree with you. Um, and then, you know, the part of it that you have to remember is there has to be enough demand in the marketplace for it. So even if it's a good idea, it may not be good enough. Um, I'll give you an example. So um, the, the man who invented uh, the post-it note, he actually passed away uh, recently. The New York Times just did a nice obituary about him. He actually came up with this adhesive and it was an adhesive that he failed because he was trying to do it for a larger purpose, um, but it wasn't gonna actually work on that purpose. What he ended up finding was that he could actually pull it off and pull it back on again. So it was like, Hmm, there must be a use for it. Well, he didn't actually come up with the use for it. It took him two years till he found another coworker in 3M who was actually at a church 
and he was noticing that he had uh, tags within his, uh, you know, his, his I, I guess it might have been a Bible, something that he was reading. Or, um, and he's like, what if we put that adhesive here so I could attach it and detach it, knowing kind of like a bookmark? And so it took them two years to figure out that that was a potential idea, which at that time wasn't even a post-it yet. Um, and then it came to be that, you know what? We need to find a market for it. So they actually opened up four different markets, including Richmond, Virginia. They really didn't do well in, this, in the, the office supplies as they thought they would. Then they did, um, they flooded the Idaho market with free merchandise around post-it notes. And all of a sudden it started picking up and people were like, oh, I definitely need that, I'd buy that. So if you can see that process, like. You have somebody who invents an idea, who actually understands how to use a adhesives. You have somebody else who's like, I need a, a, I need a solution that's actually going to help me re-tag something and reposition it every time I need to go back into it because I don't want to keep wasting paper. And then you had to have the market demand enough that it was big enough that people go, oh yeah, I could actually see this. Like this would be great in offices. This would be great for design thinking purposes. This would be great for you know X Y Z. All of a sudden, post-its, you know, from the 3M has been going crazy. And if you can think about that. If you apply that to anything that you do, if there's a, a problem that you're experiencing as an entrepreneur and you just know you have to be persistent, you have to find people who understand what you're trying to achieve and you have to have people that actually want to help you get through your journey and know that the journey is it's iterative. Like you're always going to be refining, pivoting, you know, and testing. And so it, it doesn't really end. I think that's what, what's really cool about being an entrepreneur is if you're excited about change, you want to be seeing the evolution as it happens. And I think that's what's cool about gaming is you know, we go back from like Atari and Game Boy to now where we are today. It's a continuous evolution and it's only going to get better the more that we, you know, put our time into making it a more inclusive experience. Absolutely. I, I really like that story about sticky notes. I had no idea. That's That was definitely a great analogy. Thank you, Sammy. Tommy, I'm glad you're back. We, we lost your video there for a minute. I'm glad, glad, I'm glad you, you're back with us. Yeah, so, you, can thank my, you can thank my wife. She was calling me while we were talking. <laughs> Well, that's important. I mean, if you need to take the call, that's, that's no, fine. no, no. You guys are important. I'm here. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, do you have any thoughts on misconceptions about entrepreneurship and maybe how to overcome it or really help uh, folks, you know, learn and educate them that those misconceptions are, are not true? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I find is that um, a lot of times um, entrepreneurs or people who come up with a new idea that they want to start a business around, uh, they think that mass adoption is the only way to success. So they think that everybody needs to be buying their product and they don't spend enough time figuring out who's actually interested in what they have. And again, I'll, I'll tie it home to gaming. Um, a friend of mine, who's I believe also a friend of, of all of Game Gym is um, Wade, Wade Friedel. And he recognized early on in gaming that while the gaming industry in America might not be as big as it's going to get it's still kind of small he realized that it's a very loyal industry and if you can serve the needs of a very loyal customer group you have a you have a chance at starting a product or starting a business and the idea that you have to be everything to everyone is just it's almost a fallacy uh it's possible you can do it uh, but you probably need a huge team to be able to do that. So if you're starting out and you're one person or a group of people and you're some friends starting a company, think about gaming as an industry, but even get maybe even more focused than that. And think about what is a loyal segment of the gaming industry that you can serve and try not to do everything. Because if you try to do everything, you try to burn both, both ends of the candle at the same time, uh, you'll burn out. So think about it in a way that's, you know, not necessarily, I need a million people to see my YouTube channel because if I don't get a million views and I don't make any revenue from Google ads, stop thinking about it like that. Maybe you get there one day or maybe you're a streamer and maybe that's how you make your livelihood. But would you rather have a million people watching your stream for five seconds or would you rather have 10,000 people watching your stream for the full duration of the time that you're live? And for me, I'm going to go with the 10,000 people that are watching me the entire time. And I treat, I treat entrepreneurship the same way. And you can get those million followers or million customers as time goes on, but just try to walk before you run. That's really great advice. And actually that 
that uh, pivots into my next question, which is if you had to give, you know, one or two concrete pieces of advice for anybody who's looking to start their own business, um, big or small, I don't know if they're inventing the next VR headset or they just want to be a streamer, like you said, because that's, that's honestly, you know, having your own business. Now, Sammy, you said, you know, keep in mind that it's going to be about change and pivoting. And Tommy, you said, you know, don't try to please everybody, you know, focus, focus on, uh, on one thing, but do you have uh, other um, maybe similar or, or other pieces of advice that um, people listening can really take away and, 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 and uh, you know, start implementing right away? Yeah, I've got two pieces of advice that are kind of um, build off of each other. The first is the um, customer discovery or, you know, market research or just kind of going out into the field. But I'm a big believer um, and it's a big uh, concept by Steve Blank, which is get out of the building. This idea that any idea you have, um, you know, no idea is as good as 100 people telling you their thoughts on your idea. Um, and so really kind of understanding, you know, is this idea one valid, you know, are there enough people experiencing the same problem? Um, in what way are they experiencing it? And so just, you know, having them talk to you about their idea or your idea, kind of seeing what they, how they respond to it and what way they're actually thinking about it. Um, we, we do find that when we work with some entrepreneurs, they're so sold on what they've come up with their, their con conception of it. And part of it is it's in their mind, right? So they built it up. They're really excited about it. They know what they want to do. They, they're pretty sure that there's someone out there who's going to pay for it or you know buy it. And it's like, how do you know that? Who have you talked to? What have they shared with you? What what did they say? You know, maybe your idea is good, but maybe there's a way that you can refine it. And I think think that Tommy's point, you do have to start with a really small market or a niche market, so you understand them really well. The more that you understand who wants what you want and what they're willing to offer to pay for it, you know, that information is going to be really valuable, right? And, and so I think being um, an entrepreneur is also go, just going outside, talking to as many people. The second part of that is just because someone tells you something doesn't necessarily mean they're telling you everything or what they see, say doesn't literally mean exactly what you think it means, right? And so part of it is actually when you have enough feedback, you can start pulling out some threads. There are some nuggets that you're going to come across and you're like, I think the actual problem that they're experiencing is this, but also this aspect of it's what's really bugging them. And so what they meant to say was not just that X is you know, creating this issue, is that X is creating this issue at this specific time. I noticed that every single person who was driving their motorcycle hit this certain uh, speed limit. And then all of a sudden there was a trigger and that's where the actual issue is. They just didn't know that it was the acceleration that was happening, but I pulled it out from the threads because I noticed that was the same thing, right? And so that's a really big thing about being an entrepreneur is do the customer discovery and then go analyze the feedback you get because you will actually find that there's really important and insightful information that will instruct you on how to build your business. That is very insightful. Thank you. That, I never thought of that. It was really interesting. Tommy, what about you? I'm only limited to two things, right? No, you, you can, as many as you want, but I'm trying to think of, you know, I'm if you can give key. concrete pieces of advice that people can just write yeah. down right now as they're watching and they're going to yep. implement yep. them tomorrow. All right. Well, so um, the first thing is, oh man, you, you better get used to people saying no. And, and humility, whether you have it now or not, if you, if you want to be an entrepreneur and you stay in it, you will learn a great deal of humility. And it's easy to sometimes um, have successes and sometimes we get, we get real excited or we, um, you know, uh, our heads get a little bit bigger. But one thing is, is certain in entrepreneurship, which is no matter how big you are, you will always, you will always make mistakes. And it sounds so cliche, but the bigger the mistakes, the bigger the lessons. And you might feel terrible one day because something that you did when you started your business didn't work or someone made you feel kind of uh, less, less valuable than, than you did when you went into the conversation with them. But the truth is, is you're always gonna be able to learn something from it. And you gotta be able to take the negative experiences and flip them. And the more practice you have at doing that, the better you will get, the thicker your skin will get. But on, on the second piece of advice, 
be nice to entrepreneurs. Be nice to your friends who have crazy ideas. Be nice to the person that's your friend that's always coming up with a side hustle. Just because you don't want to, you know, get into something crazy with your friend, you know, it, it, be supportive. Because I will tell you that one of the one of the biggest things that happens to entrepreneurs is that they start to feel a sense of of loneliness uh, because you're so focused on a topic or a project that typically you are the most passionate about out of everybody. You might have a really good partner and that you're in it together, but typically if you're an entrepreneur, you care the most about what you're doing. And you have to know and learn that not everybody is going to um, have an emotional attachment to what you're doing. And they really will treat it like a business. So the advice that stems from that is to understand that just about every single entrepreneur I've ever met, with exception to maybe a few, wants to share their experience, wants to help you, and wants to talk to you because they know exactly what it's like to feel that way. They were you when, when they decided, you know what, I'm going to start this business. They were you when they were in their parents' basement, you know, and they were like typing away, trying to start their company. Or for me, I was in, literally in my parents' garage and my computer froze. And I don't mean like the software froze. Like, I mean, the actual liquid literally. in my screen froze because I was wearing a parka and there was no heater. And how do I talk to my friends about that? You know, my friends who have nine to five jobs and, and normal, normal lives, they don't understand that. So if anyone's out there and you go for it, or you did just go for it, there are people who know what you're going through and they want to talk. And uh, I'll, I'll cut myself off there because that's usually the most important thing is the human side of entrepreneurship. And that's, that's what makes or breaks people. That's really important advice as well. Thank you. But but I think like even taking it further out, just be nice in general, not just entrepreneurs, just be nice. Simple. Because That's simple. That, yeah. It, and it goes towards uh, your advice about humility, right? You, you have to be nice to the people that you're asking advice uh, from. And just in general, like what we, we talked about um, on all of our other panels or speakers about toxicity or inclusivity, like really being nice solves a lot of problems. Yes. Yes, that was the, so the professor in me was coming out and I, I said what you said in like five minutes that you said in 30 seconds. So yes, just be nice. That's the advice. <laughs> it's all right. Like explanation is good. Examples is good. Analogies, helping people understand. It's, it's all good. All right. it's all good. <laughs> good. So uh, what are some uh, companies that are either a part of the incubator or maybe a part of Maverick or maybe not even a part of either of those, but uh, sort of up and coming companies that uh, you two are personally excited about, maybe they're to watch uh, as part of like, if you're interested in joining them or interested in looking and really learning from their experience and any, any kind of companies out there you're excited about? I feel a little bashful about this because I'm very fortunate and I, I think Tommy to that extent, you know, we at the university have a lot of great companies that are coming out of the university and, and maybe I'm being a homer by promoting them, but, you know, I can talk very, um, you know, just gladly about IonQ, this is quantum computing company that has a lot of exciting potential. We have a company called Amuta that is doing data governance. That's going to be really big. We have another called Cybrary uh, that's doing online training, uh, and they're all connected to the university. Another one that's called Medcura. They're about to release a product that's going to be in CVS. They've come up with a, a topical kind of cream that helps you clot blood really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then another one called Inky that does anti-phishing. So, I mean, there's a lot of cool companies. And then we have another one called Airgility, which is doing drone technology that could be used um, even in COVID times to go into stadiums and spray UV light and help kind of kill off bacteria and viruses and just kind of really cool things like that. And um, we even have a student team called Blimp that's doing um, drone logistics. So a lot of cool things that are happening at the university that I'm really excited about. Uh, and so I feel bad if I'm, you know, shining too much light on the University of Maryland, but I do think that there's a lot of great things happening here. And I'll say, you know, there are great things happening at George Mason and Georgetown and GW and Catholic. Um, and of course, all the system schools in, in, in the state of Maryland. Um, and we're really excited about all of them, but part of it is we're part of this ecosystem. And so having these great tech companies and also even smaller businesses and ventures coming out of the area, I think is going to do a lot for economic development. And, and that's really what kind of entrepreneurship is, is this side of 
helping to build the economy in a certain region and hopefully to build and include many of the people in those communities that have been left out. And so that's one of the things that we are obviously being very careful about and deliberate. And I think a good thing that's happening now is even companies are understanding that that's something that they have to build in for and train for and identify opportunities and on-ramps. Um, and so we're doing a lot of things like that at the institution to make sure we have more women in tech, more underrepresented communities in tech, um, and a lot of high schools and programs are doing the same thing. That sounds so, uh, amazing. It, sorry, I'm just going to say, don't don't feel bad. You know, this is this is a question. Let's spotlight some of these companies that are doing amazing things. So, if if people want to learn more about them, can we look them up on the University of Maryland website, or how do we learn about these companies? Yeah, I would definitely say go to discoverydistrict.umd.edu. So that's the uh, website for the research park that I manage. Um, and then we also have maverick.umd.edu if you want to learn about uh, connecting with Maverick. Um, and then we also have something called the Innovation Gateway. So this is open. Um, something I worked on with my colleagues, basically an online repository of online resources for innovation or innovators and entrepreneurs, mostly affiliated with the university, but it is open. Um, we also have something called a small business development center, which is connected to the state of Maryland and the University of Maryland. And so that's open to any entrepreneur in the state. Um, but yeah, innovate.umd.edu, check it out. Uh, we actually have a special uh, page dedicated to black founders because we want to make sure that we can highlight more entrepreneurs of color and get them the support that they need. And so it's innovate.umd.edu slash black founders. Excellent. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Tommy, I'm so sorry, I didn't one, mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Just one, one for me. And, and there's a tie-in to, to, to being um, outside of the university, but also a part of the alumni group. Um, so Gridiron Card Group is uh, founded by a Terp uh, who graduated a few years back. And it ties into gaming because one, they do... Um, financial advising for professional gamers and helping professional gamers understand how to uh, manage money properly because a lot of these young people come into money at a very young age and there's usually a lot of it and it's very similar to um, physical pro athletes where there's issues with money because as soon as they come into it a lot of family members and friends um, they you know they see a lot of wealth and oftentimes these young people spend a lot of their money um, the other thing that they do is they um, they deal with collectibles and understanding the markets behind collectibles and alternative um, assets. So that's Gridiron Card Group, and the alumni uh, is a turf. And then the other one, which which I'll highlight, is 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 a good friend of mine, um, a guy named Dominic Fragman um, from something called Sonic Spirits, and he has found that he, as a musician, uh, with some of the things that he does and the media side of things. It believes that there's a place for having open dialogue and conversations that connect to the gaming industry. And it goes more into the health side of it, being nice to people, having positive conversations, uh, not necessarily only talking about the specific games itself, but more about the people behind the games that are playing them. So those are my two plugs. And um, yes, they're local, uh, but they're just a little bit different. And um, I really highly encourage everybody to look them up. Thank you. Thank you. And can you remind us, so Sammy did a good job to telling us how people can get involved with Maverick. Can, Tommy, can you remind us how people can get involved with the business incubator? Sure, sure. So you can reach out to me, Tommy, at umd.edu, or you can check us out at techportumd.org. And again, we are right in Southern Maryland. And uh, my email address is very easy. It's literally my first name at umd.edu. So typically that's the one that people remember. And uh, I'm always happy to talk to new people. Excellent, excellent. Well, Sammy, Tommy, thank you so much. This has been incredibly insightful and interesting and engaging. We really appreciate your time being here and shedding light on entrepreneurship, which I think a lot of people don't know very much about. So thank you for, for being here and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time and we will take a 15 minute break and we will come back with our final panel of the weekend.